Hello everyone, and welcome back to It's Tech Time. In my last video for this Proxmos course, we created our very first virtual machine and successfully installed Apache 2 on it. And then we were able to access Apache 2 on the virtual machine through our web browser, which is pretty cool, I know. In this video, we're gonna take the virtual machine from the last video, and we're gonna use it to create what is called a virtual machine template. And what this template would do will allow us to save some time when creating virtual machines in the future because we already have an Ubuntu operating system on it and we already have several other settings already set on the next virtual machine that we create using this template. So let's go ahead and get started. So in the last video we created our first virtual machine and you can see that virtual machine right here. I named mine web server and gave it number 100 by default. You may have named it something different on yours and you may have given it a different default number. And now what we're going to do like I said in the intro is I'm going to show you how to use this virtual machine to create a virtual machine template. And this will save us a whole lot of work in the future with creating other virtual machines. First thing I need to do is I need to, I need to SSH into our virtual machine. And I can't remember the IP address, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and log in. And it would help if I logged in as the right user. And then I'm going to run IPA. And that's going to give me the IP addresses for the network cards that are attached to it. And so now taking this IP address, I'll go to the terminal. And then here at the terminal, I'm going to SSH into the IP address and give it the same password. And now I'm in at the command line. I'm going to clear the screen so you can see a little bit better. And so the first things I'm going to do is add some value to this template before I create it. So personally, I'm going to go ahead and add in some aliases and some and my personal favorite bash prompt to it. If tmux is installed on the server or not, and it is just the basic form of tmux. So I'll hit control D to disconnect from that. And so I exited out of the SSH terminal back to my main computer. And I'm going to hit the up arrow back up to the SSH command. I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the front, I'm going to take SSH out, and I'm going to type in rsync. And the first thing I'm going to rsync over is bash space prompt. And even though it looks like it was successful, I actually got that command wrong and it did not work. What I need to do is do the up arrow again, and I'm going to make the screen a little bigger so you can see. And at the end of the IP address, I need to do a colon, appeal slash, home, and then my username, and then another slash. And now I'll run it again. And this time I actually asked for the password. And this time it was actually successful. So I'm going to move my bash prompt over there. I'm going to move my bash aliases over there. Personally, I'm going to go ahead and move my bash RC over there. Everything I'm moving over there is completely optional. You may want to move these things off of your computer into this t template, and you may not. You may have a completely different set of things you would like to copy over. This is just suggestions for you. So I'm going to move the bash RC over. And I have a customized tmux comp file, so I'm going to move that over as well. So after doing all that, I'm going to SSH back into my virtual machine. And right off of the bat, I see that I have a different prompt than I originally did, so I know that all my rsync commands were successful. Now, when making a virtual machine template, there's some things you don't want to be the same on every machine. And one of those is you don't want to create a template with the same SSH host keys for every virtual machine you create. And these are the SSH host keys currently on my virtual machine. And this isn't unique to Ubuntu. Any Linux machine that you can SSH into is going to have its own SSH host keys. And if you have two different machines, machines with the same SSH host key, it can cause confusion for your SSH client and you can have errors trying to log into it. We can change that, but first what we need to do is type in the right command to clear the screen so you can see. We're going to make sure that cloud init is already installed, so we're going to do app search cloud dash init. And so for me, it came back with nothing, so that tells me that it's not already in there. So I can simply do sudo to install cloud-init, and this tells me it is installed. And I'm not going to go into vast detail of what cloud-init does, but it helps you automate several tasks, which enable you to create a template like Professor do for these virtual machines. And cloud-init is going to allow us to be able to reset the SSH host keys every time we create a new virtual machine from this template. But just being installed isn't enough. What we got to do next is change directory into the Etsy SSH directory and then do a real quick ls to make sure we're in the right place and we can see our host SSH keys. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to remove these host keys. So we're going to run sudo rm ssh underscore host underscore and then star. So what that's going to do is anything that has SSH host at the beginning of the file name is going to be removed. So you need to be very careful where you run this command at. We're going to press enter and you may or may not get asked for the password. I didn't get asked for the password this time. I've already entered it in earlier. So now if I run ls-l again, I do not see any SSH host key. 
and those host files being absent is going to trigger CloudInit to regenerate the SSH host keys on the next virtual machine that you create from this template. And not only do we need to recreate our SSH host keys, but we also need to recreate our machine ID file. So first we'll cat slash etsy slash machine ID, I spelled it right. And so that needs to be unique for each virtual machine we create. We need to take it off of this virtual machine before we turn it into a template. Now you can't just delete this file, but what you can do is you can empty it. So we're gonna run sudo runcate. We'll do dash s for size, and we're gonna put zero. And then we're gonna reference the file we want to do this to, which is etsy slash machine ID, and then we'll press enter. So now if I go back up and cap this file, I should get nothing back. Now there is a symbolic link referencing this file, so we need to break that as well. And so we're gonna do ls minus l slash var slash lib slash dbus the machine id and as you can see this file is symbolically linked to the file we just emptied out and we can tell it's a sim link because we have the symbol here and because we have l at the beginning of the file permissions now if you're using a, a distribution of linux where this is not a symbolic link you can simply create a symbolic link now, mine is already symbolic linked, but I'm gonna show you what to do in case yours is not. So again, if you ran the ls command and saw that yours was symbolically linked, you do not have to do what I'm about to walk through. If yours was not symbolically linked, you would run sudo ln for link, dash s for soft, and then we're gonna reference the file, which is etsy machine id, and then where we wanna link this file to, which is gonna be var slash lib slash dbus slash machine ID. And then you would press enter. It's gonna fail for me because mine is already there. But again, if you're creating this for the first time, you should be successful and then you can run ls minus l slash var slash lib dbus machine ID to double check on it. And we'll cat etsy machine ID just to double check it's empty. And all the machine IDs, it's just a specific ID for each different virtual machine. Now another command you may want to run, and this is just to help clean up the image, is sudo apt clean. And all this does is it cleans up your app database and it removes any unused app packages. And another command you may want to use is sudo apt auto remove. And what it does is it gets rid of any orphan app packages you may have for one reason or another. And so for now, that's all I'm going to do to prepare my virtual machine template. There's really a lot of other things you could do. You may want to make sure there are certain user profiles already on your image. You may want to make sure there are certain apps already installed on your image. That's completely up to you. But for the basis of this video, this is all I'm going to do for now. So the only thing left for me to do in this virtual machine is to power it down. So I'm going to run sudo power off, and it's going to shut down for me. So right here, we have the virtual machine that we're fixing to turn into a template. And before we do this, I want to remind you that this is a one-way process. Once you turn a virtual machine into a template, it is a template from here on out. You cannot turn a template back into a virtual machine. So just keep that in mind. So we are going to right click on it and then we're going to click convert to template. And again, it's going to ask you if you're sure and want you to confirm. We're going to click yes. And you'll see the status bar down here moving, so that it's working. And so now if you look back up here, you should notice that your icon has changed. And so this is the icon that they use for virtual machine templates. So it is no longer a virtual machine, it is now a virtual machine template named Web Server. Now before we actually start using it, there is one other step that we should do. Granted, it is optional, but in my opinion, it's the best practice. So here in our menu, we're going to click Hardware, and we're going to go down here to the actual attachment of the ISO for the virtual disk, and we're going to click Edit, and then we're going to select Do Not Use Any Media, since this is a virtual machine template and then we'll click OK. And now that that's done, we'll click Add, and we're gonna go down to Cloud Init Drive. For the storage, I'll drop this down, and I'll select Local LVM, and then I'll click Add. So now you should have a Cloud Init Drive listed in your list of hardware. Now that we have that, we can click on Cloud Init, and we can edit some of these options over here. So right now, my default user is ITST, but if I wanted to, I can click on it, edit it, and I can change it to both, my user. And you can change the password if you wanted to, and you can set DNS servers, and you can even add an SSH public key if you wanted to. And these are all things you may want to do to your templates as you get more advanced in your uses of Proxmox. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to click Regenerate Image. And now we should actually be done with creating the template itself. So now we can create a brand new image from this template. And to do that, we simply go over here to our template and we'll right click and then click clone. And cloning is the actual verbiage you're gonna use. Whenever you create a virtual machine from a template, you are cloning that template. And by default, it will select the very next virtual machine ID that's available, which for us is 101. And then over here, we're gonna do a full clone as opposed to a linked clone. And a full clone means that this is gonna be an entire copy of that virtual machine template. 
for the storage it's going to say same as source which is probably okay but i personally like to hit the drop down and explicitly say local lvm and select that and then for the name of mine i'm going to call it web server 2 and that should be enough so now we're going to click clone and it's going to begin the process and while that's running i think i'll go ahead and create another virtual machine and i'll do it the same exact way i'm going to right click and go clone i'm going to call it a full clone I'm going to give it the local storage. I'm going to call this one Web Server 3. Then I'm going to click Clone. And it should start that process over here. And Web Server 2 has already finished creating. And if you noticed, Web Server 3 just finished. But if you noticed right before it finished, there was a lock on the icon. That just means it's still being created if you ever see that. Because I have noticed sometimes it will say it's done right here, but the lock icon will still be on it up here. So since those are all finished, I'm going to right click and start both of them. All right, and they both show up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the console and log in real quick. And it helps if I type the password right. So now I'm gonna run IPA to get the IP address off of this one. And I'm gonna go to web server three and do the same thing. And now that I got the IP address off of both of them. So my first time trying to SSH into them, I'm gonna get a key exchange identification error. And that's because at the moment they don't have host keys. So we're gonna have to trigger cloud init to recreate the host keys. And to do that, you simply return back to your Proxmox command line and you will enter this command here that I'll put in the description but it's sudo dpackage dash reconfigure open ssh dash server and that's for your sudo password and then as you can see it's creating ssh host keys so now if I go back to my command line and run my ssh command again now I got this error saying that there's a similar key in my known host already so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do sudo vi dot ssh slash known host and before I hit enter I'm going to make to this number 249 right here so now I'll press enter and then I'm going to do colon 249 to take me straight to that entry and then I'm simply going to hit DD to delete that line then I'm going to do escape shift CC to save that file and so now it's going to ask me if I'm sure if I want to accept those host keys I'm going to type in yes and this is going to be my pseudo password for that server web server I'm going to enter in and so I'm going to pause the video while I do this same thing on the other web server we created so now I'm SSH into both servers successfully and if you notice it says just simply web server for the host name on both of them so I'm going to go ahead and change that real quick I'm going to do sudo minus i to become root and now I'm going to do nano slash etsy slash host name first and this one is my web server 3 so I'm going to change this name and control x to save it and y to confirm and then enter and then I'm going to go over to what's going to be web server 2 and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to become root and then nano etsy host name this is web server 2 Control X to save while I confirm. And I'm also going to change the nano SC host of server dash 2. Save and close. Nano SC host of server dash 2. Save and close. And I forgot with the virtual machine, you have to actually reboot it before you see the change in the host name but as you can see now that I've logged in I have web server 3 and I have web server 2. I will go back after filming this video and put that dash in there because that's bothering me but this video is already long enough so I'm not going to worry about it. So we successfully created two virtual machines from our virtual machine template and that's pretty cool and if you're the person that uses the same Ubuntu image every time this is going to save you a whole lot of time because there's a lot of different things you can go ahead and add to your template and then you can take that template and create as many virtual machines as you need to from us single template and because you already have aliases in that template and different programs that you use on a regular basis in that template it's going to save you some time and even if you don't do all that to your template just the fact that it already has an Ubuntu server installed on it is going to save you a good 10 to 15 minutes of prep time for each virtual machine that you create from this template. So I thank you very much for taking it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and please leave me a comment down below on what you think. And I will see you guys in the next video.